Today we're going to start seeing how we can use trigonometry to solve for missing sides and eventually missing angles in right triangles. Now you've already been doing trigonometry per se. Trigonometry is the study of the relationships in right triangles and you've already used Pythagorean theorem to solve for missing sides in a right triangle. But what happens if we don't have enough information to use Pythagorean theorem? Well, then we have something called our sine, cosine, and tangent ratios, which mo are most commonly referred to, you know, the main trigonometry solving techniques that we're going to start looking at today. So the first question we need to ask ourselves is, well, when are we going to use which method? So how do you identify, can I use Pythagorean theorem that we've already used before, or do I need to use this new technique that we're going to be looking at? So you've got two categories of problems. So if you know that you have a right triangle and you were given two sides and you're just trying to find the third side, that's when you can use Pythagorean theorem. We've got our formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And as long as only one of those is missing, we can still use that formula. So if you're given two sides and you know it's a right triangle, to find that missing side, you're going to use Pythagorean theorem. However, if you're only given one side, but you are given an extra angle, so that means you have your 90 degree angle and one other angle, and you have just one side given, to find out either one of those missing sides, we're going to use our new technique, trigonometry. And we're going to spend a couple days on solving these. Today, all we're going to be focusing on is how to use trigonometry to solve for missing sides. So, First off, let's look at these diagrams. Which one is which? So again, if we're trying to find you know, a missing side and we're already given two of those sides, we can use Pythagorean theorem. So which of the triangles out of the four that I have shown, which one are gonna use, which ones can we use Pythagorean theorem on? Well, in our first triangle, again, we have 13, 23, and we're looking for a missing side of X. So that means we can use Pythagorean theorem on this one. What's our other one where we have that implied information? Now in our fourth diagram, while we do technically have a square in there, keep in mind it's still divided up into triangles. And we also have these extra marks. We have these dash marks on here which basically mean everything that has that dash mark is going to be equal to that 18. So I could also put the 18 down on that bottom side. And now if I want to solve for X, I have a right triangle with two sides already known. I can use Pythagorean theorem. And so our middle two triangles, those are the ones where we would have to use trigonometry. and trigonometry. Because again, you'll notice I have one side that's missing, I have one side that's known, and then I have extra information about the angles. So before we can do anything with this though, you know, think back to when you were writing your trigonometry ratios last lesson. We need to make sure that we've identified which angle we're going to use for reference, what kind of sides we have, and then we can start writing our relationships out. So the whole point of doing this is so we could solve the equation out and we'll need to know what some of these values are. So you already practiced writing out ratios that looked, for example, like sine of 48 degrees equals seven over you know, X, for example. So what in the world does that mean? Well if we knew a number value that we could actually write in instead of sine 48, we could solve this out. It would just be a regular equation like an algebra. So there are three different ways that you can look these values up. So most typically in your previous classes, you've used a TI 83 or 84 calculator, and you can still use those to be able to do these problems, but I know not everyone has access to those. So if you do have a TI calculator that you're using, you know, definitely let me know after you've watched the video if you have any questions on how to actually access that. Um, but the biggest thing is on your calculator, and again, I have an older version, it's a TI-83, um, but it's in the same spot. You wanna look for the mode button, which is right up next to your second button. 
And when you click on that, you've got a big list of properties. And that third line down says radian or degree. And you want to make sure that the box is around the degree to be able to do these problems. Every single trigonometry problem, our angles are always going to be with the kind of units degree. There are units called radians that if you move on to algebra three trig or pre-calc, then you'll definitely use that. Um, also too, if you ever, you know, take physics, you know, that's going to be important which units you're using. It's kind of like using feet versus meters. All of the problems that we're going to use this year are all in degree kind of units. Most likely though, you're going to be using the Schoology scientific calculator or the Desmos calculator. And so the biggest thing is, is making sure that you're in degree mode before you do any of these problems. So let me actually switch over to something that I've set up for you. So if you look at the very top of unit seven in Schoology, I've created an entry called scientific calculators. And this is just kind of an empty assessment, but I wanted you to be able to see how this is gonna look in any of your lesson checks or in your test. And there's only one question in there. You do not need to submit that assessment. And it basically gives you access to both things. So it gives you access to the Virginia Standards of Learning calculator, which if you're one of my people that does need to take the SOL, I don't think we have too many, um, that's the calculator you're gonna have available. And so to double check that you're in degree mode on this, you just need to hit the little wrench button. And then if you scroll down, you'll notice at the very bottom, there's that toggle between radians and degrees. And as long as the degrees is green, you're in the correct mode. And again, that's pretty much the standard version that you'll see in any SOL. So it's automatically in that mode, but it's never a bad thing to double check. Now, if you're using the scientific calculator in Schoology, again, you're looking for that calculator app on the right-hand side. And if you've used this before, you'll notice you know, pretty much in every single assessment um, or practice that you've done through Schoology, I've turned this calculator on. The biggest thing you need to do is if you notice this RAD up the top left of that calculator, you actually need to hit that little button with the nine dots to toggle it over to degree or DEG and then you'll be in the correct mode for doing these problems. And so if you look down at example one in the notes, and I'll flip back over to there in a second, you know, all that, that question is asking you to do is to plug in these values and see what your calculator spits out. So for example, if you wanted to hit sine of 27 degrees, then on your scientific calculator through Schoology, you'd hit the SIN button, abbreviation for sine, and then it starts you out. So with that parentheses, inside your set of parentheses, you're going to type in your degree, so type in your 27. And you can close the parentheses or not. I would always err on the side of caution and close those parentheses, and then hit equals, and it'll spit out a number. And then you could substitute that number into any equation that we're going to use in these problems. So now would be a good chance to pause the video, try out these practice problems on your own. Let me pop back over to the practice problems in case you don't have them printed out. Huh. So I would go ahead and type these in, pause, or pause the video, type these into graphing calculator of choice to figure out what values you've got, and then come back to the video and see, you know, do your solutions match up. All right, so as I'm working, I'm actually typing things into my TI calculator so I don't have to switch back and forth between the different screens. Um, but you type them in the same way and you should be getting out exactly the same answer. So when you type in sine 27 degrees, you should get approximately 0.45399. For cosine of 27, 0 0.8910. And usually when I write these out, I'm going to be writing, you know, more decimal places than most of your problems are going to be asking for because I want to make sure I have an accurate value. The more accurate your answer is, the more or the more accurate your trig value is, the more accurate your future answers are going to be. Tangent 27, you should get out 0 0.5095. Again, I am if I'm rounding off, I'm rounding to four decimal places or the 10,000th position. Okay, sine of 63 gives me 
zero, cosine of 63 gives me 0.4539. If I was going to round that to four decimal places, it would be 4540. And then tangent of 63 is 1.9626. Now, notice something about your solutions. Every single one of these answers came out with a decimal that was smaller than one, except for tangent 63. And that's OK because if we go back to how these are set up, so your, let's say we had our, let's see, 27 degrees. And I had X, C, and Y. So when I set up my sign of my angle, just like before, my opposite side is X, and my hypotenuse is C, but my hypotenuse is the biggest side in the triangle. And if the biggest side, the biggest number is on the bottom of the fraction, then that means your fraction is always going to be equal to less than one. We don't have that restriction with tangent. Tangent can be any combination, so you can get any answer out for tangent. But for sine and cosine, you should always, always get a number out that's smaller than one. If you don't, double check the mode on your calculator. Okay, let's do some practice problems. So when I'm setting these up, I'm using the same procedure as we did in the 7B video. I want to identify my angle, make sure I know what kind of sides I have. Do I have the opposite side, the adjacent side, the hypotenuse side, and then write my equation out. The only thing different we're doing today is now we're gonna solve it. And so when I do these problems too, never a bad idea to remind myself of the ratios that we used. And so if I scroll down a little bit, You'll notice on the right hand side of my practice problems, I have that SOHCAHTOA written down just as a reminder of my order. So again, your sine is your opposite over hypotenuse sides. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse sides. And tangent is opposite over adjacent sides. So let's solve some of these out. Okay, In the examples directions, it does say solve from the missing side in each right triangle, round to the nearest 10 thousands. So that's four places. Now that's more specific than you'll get on most of the practice problems. A lot of them will ask you for tenth, one place, or hundredths, two places. Um, but be aware that you could be asked for any number of places on any problem. Alrighty. So in number two, I have 28 degrees. And so compared to the 28, I have x, which is straight across the triangle. So that's going to be my opposite side. 32 is right next to the 28, so that's my adjacent side. And so as soon as I've labeled this, now I go to my SOHCAHTOA, my list of rules, which one uses opposite and adjacent? Well, that's gonna be my tangent ratio. So tangent of my angle is always gonna equal opposite over adjacent. And all I need to do is fill in this information and then solve out the leftover equation. So the angle I have is 28 degrees. So tangent of 28 degrees equals my opposite side, x, over the adjacent side, 32. OK, so if I wanted to solve for x, I just need to get x by itself. Now, I could, if I want to, plug in tan 28 at this point, get a number spit out of my calculator. However, I want to be as exact as possible on this. So what I like to do is actually get that x by itself first. And so I'm going to move that 32. Well, if 32 is dividing the x, how do I undo divide? I multiply. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 32. And so then that's going to let me, then on the left-hand side, I have 32 tan 28 degrees equals x. And so notice I put the 32 out in front. I don't typically like to put it at the end, but as long as you're careful with putting your parentheses in, how you type it in the calculator doesn't really matter. Um, so now 32 times tan 28 equals x. I'm just going to plug that straight in my calculator. So 32 type tan, it opens your parentheses no matter which calculator you're using. And then 28, close my parentheses, hit enter, 
And that means that my X came out to be approximately 17.01, excuse me, 0147. If you did not get that out from your calculator, again, double check your mode. Make sure you're in degree mode before plugging that in. Alrighty, let's look at number three. So again, same process. Identify the angle you're going to want to use. We never want to use our right angle. We always want to use one of the acute angles. And right now, all I've got labeled is 41, so let's use that one. So according to our diagram, our x is our adjacent side, and our 32 is our hypotenuse. So write your equation and solve it out. Which one uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Yeah, looking down at the list, the only one that uses those two is the C, the cosine. So my equation is going to be cosine of whatever my angle is equals my adjacent over hypotenuse. So all I do is fill in my values. So cosine 41 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse 32. Well, this one we can solve out exactly the same way as before. Multiply both sides by 32 to clear your fraction. And then you're going to have 32 cos 41 degrees equals x. And all we have to do is plug that straight in the calculator. So 32 cos 41, close our parentheses, and we end up with the x is approximately equal to 24.1507. Alrighty, a few more examples. Okay, number four. Wait a second. Number four looks just like number three, doesn't it? We have different values, but our variables in the same place our numbers are labeling the same sides and the same angle. So should this one also be cosine? Huh. So 73 right next to it, there's our adjacent. Six is our hypotenuse. And so again, let's write our equation. Cosine of our angle, in this case, we have 73 degrees, equals our adjacent, which is x, over hypotenuse, which is six. OK. Clear your fraction. So 6 cos 73 degrees equals x. Plugging in your calculator, 6 cosine 73 degrees is. So x is approximately equal to 1.7542. Alrighty, what do you think the correct ratio is for using on number five? Again, identify your angle, identify your kinds of sides. X looks like he's right next to the 40, but he's also directly opposite from that right angle. So I know X is the hypotenuse no matter what. What about the 16? Straight across from the 40, so that's our opposite. We're using opposite and hypotenuse. Our ratio is sine. So sine of 40 degrees equals 16 over x. Now this one looks a little different. The x now is in the denominator of the fraction. I'm still going to start the problem the same way, though. I don't like having fractions if I can avoid them. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the denominator of the fraction to clear it out. So that clears out the x. Now I have x sine 40 degrees equals 16. But the x isn't completely by itself now. So now I have the sine 40 sitting with it. So keep in mind, the x and the sine 40, they're multiplying each other. So what I'm going to do is actually divide both sides now by sine of 40 degrees. Again, that cancels it out. Sine 40, keep in mind, if we plug that into our calculator, it's just equal to a number. So that whole expression altogether 
in the back of my head, I'm thinking, okay, that's just a number value. I don't care that it's written kind of weird. That's just a number answer. So I can treat it just like a number answer. All ready. So then if I write my simplified version, X is now equal to 16, <coughs> excuse me, divided by sine of 40 degrees. I have X totally by itself now. So that's exactly what I'm gonna type in my calculator. So 16 divided sine 40 degrees. Again, close your parentheses to be very careful. And I'm getting out approximately 24.8916. I have to round that five up that I saw in that fourth place. And again, you should be getting the same solution out if you plug the same values in in the same order. Doesn't matter what calculator you're using. If you are using a calculator that's different from a TI calculator or the calculator on Desmos or your Schoology cal calculator, you know, definitely ask me to pop in during breakout rooms so I can see what calculator and talk with you about which calculator you're using. Um, but I would highly, highly encourage you to stick with the calculator that's on Schoology or use that Desmos calculator. Because again, if you have to take the SOL, that the Desmos calculator is what you're going to have available. And I want you to get used to using it. Okay, two more practice problems. And then what I'll do is I'll stop the video and you'll go through and try the you try problems at the bottom. And then you can check for those possible answers um, on your own in the completed version of the notes. Okay, 64 is my angle. I have my hypotenuse for X and my adjacent for 15, which means I have to use cosine. So cosine of 64 degrees equals my adjacent 15 over my hypotenuse X. My X is in the denominator again, so I need to go ahead and multiply that through. It cancels out my X. So now I have I'm going to move my work down here for extra room. So X cosine of 64 degrees equals 15. But I still have to get the X by itself. So divide both sides by cos 64, cos 64. Cancels that out on the left. So X is now equal to 15 divided by cos of 64 which means I can type that directly in my calculator. And I'm getting out the value of approximately 34.2176. Alrighty, last problem. Number seven, identify your angle, your sides, 14 is your opposite, X is your hypotenuse. So we're looking at, sine, sine of 51 degrees equals 14 over X. Same scenario. Multiply out to clear your fraction, which means we have X sine 51 degrees, excuse me, 51 degrees equals 14. Still need to get the X by itself. So divide both sides by sine of 51. Cancels that whole expression out from the left. And we are, we now have remaining X equals 14 divided by sine of 51 degrees. And we can plug that straight in the calculator. I'm getting out 18, approximately 18.0146. Again, notice every single time I'm writing my answers, I'm writing approximately equal to, because as soon as I round off this problem, I don't have an exact answer anymore. It's pretty darn close, especially if we're going out to four decimal places, but it's not exact. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video. I do want you to go through and try eight and nine. And again, you'll notice, you know, most of the problems that we've been doing, we had sine, we had cosine, most of these are sine and cosine. But don't forget, if you come across anything that has your opposite and adjacent side, 
like we did in number two. Those are your tangent problems. You can still use all the same techniques on those. As always, let me know if you have any questions. Try out the last two you try problems and check your answers on the completed organizer that I have posted below this video. Then as you're working through your practice today, again, if you get stuck on anything, hit the little ask for help button down at the bottom and I will pop in and help you get back on track. Talk to you later.